Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, where we bring you a weekly dose of powerlifting news, tips, and training advice with a touch of 80s rock ballads. This podcast is presented by Team Roar Powerlifting, your source of the most comprehensive coaching and meet day preparation. Here are your hosts, Josh Roar and Laura Sturm. Welcome to episode 155. Happy Thanksgiving, Josh Roar. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> so I am grateful that I get to um, see you like every week this way because, you know, we don't get to train together anymore. So this is really my way to stay in touch with Joshua. And the podcast yeah, you, is good, too. You really are lucky, aren't you? I'm super lucky. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm being funny. Um, yeah, I am, too, because like we don't get to. I mean, literally, this is the only time we hang out. So. Long story short, this podcast is really just, we just record you and I like catching up every week. And, Basically. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. a reality TV show. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on in the powerlifting world? Keep me in the loop. Uh, well, there's a couple of meets that are, have popped up on the calendar for 2024 in Georgia. So I figured we just run down the calendar because I'm not sure which ones we've mentioned yet and which ones we haven't. So uh, we'll just go down the list. Uh, January 13th is the Southeastern Collegiate Cup. And on the USA Powerlifting website, it says it's in Cartersville, but on the USA PL Georgia website, it says Kennesaw State University. Um, it's about a 30 minute difference, so it's not that big of a deal, but I'm just not sure exactly which location it's in. I'm assuming it's at Kennesaw State, um, but that's a collegiate meet. So I know a lot of collegiate teams are competing, so that should be pretty cool. Um, we already talked about the Georgia State meet February 23rd through 25th. That's going to be a big one. Um, I have not heard anything about this meet March 23rd, Melee Madness. Um, it's M-E-L-E-E, -E -E, so I'm assuming it's Melee as melee in like... So Lydia is running it, so it's, it's a play on their play last on name. Words. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. Um, that's going to be up in Ringgold, which is kind of up near Chattanooga. And then I think we mentioned Collegiate Nationals is in Atlanta next year, April 11th through 14th. I'm not sure if we did or not, but if you're a collegiate lifter, definitely circle that because um, it's going to be in Atlanta. So it has to be awesome. Um, yeah. And then April 20th is the Savannah Spring Classic, and that's that's in um, noon in Georgia. That's a joke. Well, okay. Not not a good not a good <laughs> joke. Savannah Spring Classic, April twentieth in Savannah, um, and those are the only meets on the calendar so far for twenty twenty four. But if you are thinking about signing up for any of those, I would suggest you do so sooner than later because the Georgia meets, pretty much all of them, have been selling out pretty quick. So um, last I looked, there was only like eighty spots left for the Georgia State meet in February. So that's filling up quick. That's awesome. Yep. And collegiate nationals being in Atlanta, I would also suggest anybody who wants to go watch a really fun meet should just go. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Collegiate is crazy. Crazy. Yeah, awesome. it's, yeah. It's, it's the, to me, it's still the best meet because the teams are so invested that, you know, if you, if there's one lifter from a team lifting, like they're all there in the crowd cheering for them and going crazy. And it's, oh. it's great. Yeah. It's loud. Oh, I, I love collegiate lifting. That's awesome. Um, this is not really applicable to us, but it was interesting. So I thought I'd mention it. Um, the Australian Powerlifting Union made an announcement today, uh, Wednesday, that they are leaving the IPF as of December 31st. So hmm. there's no That's details as to why. Um, it, it sounds like they made the decision to do it, not that they were voted out. So um can't say I blame them, <laughs> but it's just interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to find out uh why they posted. I mean, I can give you a list of reasons why, uh just just <laughs> based on how the IPF operates, but um you know, I don't know what the specific reason that they are are having issues oh. with. So oh. Are they part of um, USA Powerlifting, or will they be? They are not currently. Um, we have a USA Powerlifting Australia 
um, chapter over there. So I don't know if some lifters will come over to USA powerlifting after they leave or not. Um, but I don't know. Interesting. We will see. Cool. So there was a, a thing I saw um, on those internets where I was like, I did a little sideways head tilt. I'm like, why would they do that? Um, so this was the post that uh, I think you were involved in doing because I saw your name signed at the bottom. Um, so as of, uh, I can't remember the date actually, um, that if you're a USA certified, USA PL certified coach, club coach, that you would be um, required to be a state ref to keep your certification and going forward, you'd need to be a state ref before you take the certified course. And since that was, you know, your name was signed at the bottom, I was like, hmm, Josh would know why this is happening. And I'm sure there's a good reason other than, well, and maybe it's just because it lets you teach less in the actual course if they already are familiar with the rules at that extent. Um, cause that's my training background. Prerequisites are nice. And we also need more state refs pretty much in every state. Am I close? You're close. Yeah. You, you touched on some of it. Um, the main, the main reason was it's kind of a twofold. Uh, one part of it is we want to make sure all of our, um, certified coaches are safe sport certified. And the one of the requirements of state referee is to be safe sport certified. So that kind of checks the box. So it's, to be honest, it's less work on our end to monitor it, it, it that way. Um, mm -hmm. As the coaching committee co-chairs, it's easier just if, you know, you're either a state ref or you're not. If you're a state ref, we know you, all that, that box is checked. Uh, the other part of it is there's a lot of people that take the course that don't have a powerlifting background um many of them actually take the course just to kind of learn what powerlifting is um and you know as it stands if they complete the course and pass everything like we have no i guess reason to not give them a certification and say they're a certified coach even though they probably are maybe not quite you know what we would consider coach oh. Yeah, caliber, I guess. So, you know, starting in 2024, um, there's actually a couple prerequisites to becoming a club coach. Um, there's actually going to be a USA Powerlifting Fundamentals course that you have to take first. Um, uh, sorry, coaching fundamentals course that you have to take first. And wow. basically, there's no instructor. It's all online. Um, but it's a lot of the very basic rules and basic coaching information that we have to cover in the club course right now instead of going deeper so that's a prerequisite as well as being a state referee so you know your question for people that are already club coaches like they have until july 1st uh, to become a state referee in order to maintain credentials um, and then anybody that's taking the course for the first time starting january 1st they have to be a state referee first and take that coaching fundamentals course yeah. first um, so it's just, it's a way to, I mean, as it is now, and, and it, it's almost like in general, like personal training, like anybody can get online and become a certified personal trainer in the next five, three or four hours if they wanted to, if they don't know anything. Um, and that's always been a, a pet peeve of mine is just like, there's no real standard. Um, and, and having a certification in some ways doesn't mean you really know your stuff. And this is just a way to kind of raise that level of competency a little bit where if somebody is oh. certified in 2024, like they have a very legit understanding of the sport, the rules, how to coach and, and those things. So um, it, it's probably going to upset some people because, you know, there there's a, you know, you got to actually earn this credential now. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's going to be, I think it's going to be better for the organization and just the, the standard of coaching going forward. All right. So I have a couple questions. Okay. So if you're wanting to become a club certified coach, well, what if you have no interest in actually being a state referee? Because they're kind of two diff very different, um, 
yeah, roles, right? Being a state ref, you're sitting in a chair, you're judging individual lifts, you're volunteering to help these meets go on. But if you're a coach, you might just want to be wanting to work with your own athletes. Yeah. Well, um, I guess tough. Like that's, that's the rule. I mean, if I'm being that's blunt, so well. that's, that's the okay. rule going forward. So, um, you know, the only, the only requirements to maintain your state ref, uh, credential is to work two meets in four years. So, you know, and that is something that's, that's being monitored now too, is, um, is state referees have to continue to work to maintain the credential as well. So that means that certified coaches have to referee and that couldn't be score table. That can be, you know, expediting mm-hmm. whatever two sessions per four years. So like that's very doable. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also makes you stay up to date on the rules and things like that as well. So if that's too hard for you, then you shouldn't be a certified coach anyway. Um, it is kind of how I feel. Um, that's a little blunt, but. So what do you have to do to be able to become a sort of, I'm sorry, a state ref in the first place? Like, are there prerequisites to that as well? Yeah. You just have to be involved in powerlifting for a year. Um, and you have to be 18 and a member. Yeah. So Mm. it's actually, they've streamlined the process now. So it's actually a little bit easier. Um, basically you, reach out to your state chair for approval and then they'll send you the test to take online and it's open book. And then you just have to complete the practical exam sitting at a meet. Um, so like it, you can be, you know, if, if you've been involved in the sport for a year, you know, whether lifter, coach, uh, meet director, scoring table, whatever, um, you're eligible to take it as long as you're 18 and are a member of USA powerlifting. So you, you can get that done pretty quick. So it's oh. not really going to be a hindrance. I don't think for people, um, cause we're telling you now, like you haven't, you know, people that are already certified, you have until July. And if you're going to take it in the future, you know, oh. do this, first. get it, get it done now. Yeah. Oh. Um, and, and there's, there's other sides of it too. Like there's a lot of coaches that I've seen basically just like cuss out a, a referee for a bad call that they think is a bad call oh. or whatever. And I think having been in the chair, gives you a completely different perspective of how to interact with, with, you know, referees and other coaches and things like that too, that I think is, is part of being a, a good coach. So, you know, yeah. If if people balk at the fact they got to be a state referee, then you're not, you're not certified coach caliber anyway, in my opinion. Sorry if I hurt your feelings. You totally hurt my feelings. Yeah. But aren't you a state so, ref? <laughs> well, I I would be if I had an active membership. Oh, uh, you just don't. Well, you well. Yeah. So you, does that? It's the other thing. Am I qualified? So, well, so you have to be. You have to have an active membership to be certified. Also, oh, so once yeah, you, you once go. your membership. So if you renew your membership, your 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 coach status gets reactivated. But so currently, yeah. if you're not a member, you're actually not currently certified. Right. But once so you renew it, it'll I, pop back up online. Why would I, and I don't mean I, like personally me, but why would anyone want to become a certified coach in the first place? This is where you sell it. Well, I don't know. No. <laughs> so th- there's a couple reasons. Like, I mean, if this is something that you're truly passionate about and, and want to be a good coach, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, why would you, why would you, like learn how to be an accountant if you want to be an accountant, like you want to be good at what you do. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, these are all things like one of the, one of the, yeah, it's not, it's not the sexy thing, but like, if you want to be a good coach, like you need to know the rules and how to apply them in, in your decision-making as a coach. And so many coaches don't know the rules and that's, that drives me crazy. Like, you know, well, they got a red, a red light with a red card. Why, you know, and then they go complain to the referees, like what you call, well, the answer was on the on the thing. You just don't know how to read the rules. Like mm-hmm. you don't know what the, what, right, the right. what it means. Like just like stuff like that just drives me crazy. So like this is mm-hmm. a way to up that level of knowledge that coaches are going to have to have uh, in order mm-hmm. to be certified. But um, you know, other things 
so so coming down the pike too, and we're not going to get into too much, but like there, we are, you know, 2025, there's going to be maintenance of credential requirements and continuing education opportunities um, in order to maintain credentials as well. So, you know, this is really just the first step of, of becoming um, a state referee to be a, a club coach or, or any coach at any level, I guess. Right. Um, and to but, get that certification. Yeah. But, you know, we're working on, you know, th- that question of why, like right now it's really just for the knowledge. Um, but, you know, we're working on some ideas that, you know, the certification will actually come with some perks down the road. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so oh. I can't say what those are. Cause again, those are, haven't been fully decided, but you know, one of them um, for senior national level, which is level two and level three coaches, like we started this, this past nationals is, um, those, all of those certified individuals will get those names and contacts will get sent to everybody on the roster at national meets, um, with, uh, with their availability for meet day handling. So, um, you know, that's a pretty big perk right there of being a level two coach, but again, getting to level two requires you being level one first. Um, but we're, we're, we're working on, you know, perks for level one coaches as well. Um, t-shirts, t-shirts. Yeah, like a T-shirt that you can wear that's like bright orange at a meet. It says, I'm a certified coach. You should ask me questions or something. I don't know. Because it uh, makes that person really easy to pick out in a crowd. It does. So if you're at a meet and you're like, man, I don't even have a coach. I'm so lame. I need a coach. Um, oh, wait, there's that guy in that orange shirt. You know, I was actually going to make fun of you for that idea. Um, because <laughs> that, <laughs> I thought that sounded weird, but from that point of view, that actually does kind of make sense. Like if somebody's looking for a certified coach. Yeah. Yeah. Like black. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's my contribution. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) T-shirts. Well, and you can have like yellow for like the, the club level and orange for the next thing. And then red for the, you know, what if you're colorblind and all three of those colors look the same? Oh, and I guess you're shit out of luck, Josh Roar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Did anyone ever get you those glasses that we could see? Yeah, they did. Did it work? I I thought we talked about this. Uh I think so, Christmas Christmas like five years ago. Uh my friends all chipped in and bought them for me. But nice. there's very specific like um prescriptions, I guess, or levels of colorblind. So like they just bought the generic mm-hmm. ones, so they didn't really do anything. Um, the only thing that I noticed that they do is, so, you know, like those books, you, you know, there's like a number hidden in the colors. Like right. I can't see, I can't see nine out of 10 of those and the glasses didn't change any of it. But what oh. I did notice is when I sing karaoke and you do the duet, like if I just sing solo, I can see like, you know how the word like scrolls across as, as you're, you know, where, where you're supposed right. to be at. I can see that fine. But when you do, uh, when you, when two people are singing and the guy's side part of it, I can't tell when the text is scrolling. So I'm always off. Um, I'm always way off on like the timing and everything. If I don't really know the song, but if I wear the colorblind glasses that I have, I actually can see it. So I call them my karaoke glasses. <laughs> be funny. I'm sure that's not exactly the, the intent of them, but. It does. It does help. But that's so Josh Roar. That, <laughs> right. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sure they help in other areas somewhere. I just, I, I have noticed that they help in karaoke. Yeah. So we all need to chip in to get you the next level of glasses. Is what you're saying? Well, I don't, I don't know. Um, I haven't researched. Well, they may enough. not work. So I think I need to actually get, so the company that makes them, I forget what, what the company's called, but I think that you actually have to get, evaluated and get a very specific like kind of like an eyeglasses prescription deal right where they actually can you know customize it for your level of colorblindness and i just have not done that wouldn't it be sick to see colors though i mean see yeah i mean it would but i don't know i I don't yeah i don't know you don't know what you don't know and so you know right right exactly i know i'm so eloquent yeah well said. <laughs> so anyway. Anyway. What's up with so, the Georgia State program? Well, we talked about it last time, but 
we have uh, the state meet program on our training app that you can subscribe to. It's a 13 week program that basically gets you ready for the Georgia state meet. So it starts on November 26th, which is this coming week. So if you have not signed up and you are doing this Georgia state meet, don't have a program to follow. I highly recommend this. We're going to actually have the uh, a separate channel on the discord that we have for questions and things like that. So we kind of, can group it's not group coaching but it's kind of like a group of people doing it um following along and you know can ask questions as we go so right. uh yeah pretty cool yep um and you can find that, that yeah you can find it on our a link in our bio on instagram or team app is the direct website to the training app you can subscribe to so Very should cool. be pretty good um all right Rule book review. Did I answer all your questions about the referee thing? Does that make sense? Yes, you did. Okay. Yeah. I just think that, you know, we got to start having some, like if somebody's a certified coach, like that needs to be like a big, like people need to recognize that that's a, right. not just a, you know, couple hours that they were online and passed it. Like they actually mm-hmm. have extensive background in the sport and know, know the rules in, in and out and, you know, so anyway, and can proudly wear the t-shirt and can proudly wear the t-shirt. Exactly. Yes. That's and funny. of course, there's leaf blowing going on outside my window. Can you hear that? Uh, a little bit, but not really. Oh, good. Okay. Move yeah, on. It's fine. All right. So uh, rule book review, we're actually going to start doing kind of two. Well, these, these two kind of tie in together related to ages. Um, so again, we're just going through talking about some of the blue highlights in the, I also assume they're blue, um, the highlights in the rule book, which are basically like, um, clarifications to, to rules. So, um, rule 1.6.3.2, um, is I'll just summarize it. You can go in and read the actual rule if you want, but basically, um, it, it's for the high school division because there are, there are different rules, for youth lifters, which are age 13 and below. Um, but it basically says if you are entered in the high school division, you do not get to use youth rules. You are in the high school division. So, um, and, and high school means ninth grade or to 12th grade. Um, so for example, you can't use a youth bar if you're 13, if you're in the high school division, um, things like that. You can't take the half kilo increment jumps if you're 13 years old, but entered in the high school division. So that's just kind of a clarification there because technically if you're 13, you're a youth lifter, but if you're not in the youth division, you are, you are, you know, you have to abide by the rules of the division. And that's very, that's a very rare uh, instance because again, you have to be in ninth grade. So a 13 year old in ninth grade is, is lifting in the high school division. Right. Um, And then the other one, uh, and that, that's specific to high school nationals, um, per the rule book there. So I assume that's the case, uh, that's the case for local meets too, but I think high school nationals was the example used. Um, and then this is an interesting one. Um, this is a, a special note after, uh, rule 1.7.5.1 in regards to master's age divisions. So currently, every all age divisions are are based on your actual age so like youth teen junior it's based on how old you are on competition day and masters are based on the year so january 1 of that year that you turn whatever age that's the year age you are for the whole year well as of january 1 2024 that is switching to be the age on competition day so that all usa powerlifting mm-hmm. age categories are the same um, mm-hmm. which should simplify things for everybody. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah sure. that, and, and that's going to have implications in the pro series because the age coefficient used now is going to potentially be different for two lifters, mm-hmm. um, that are like one week apart based if they compete like in that, in that, mm-hmm. uh, right. area. So oh, good point. Yeah. So something to keep in mind, um, you know, again, that starts January one, basically you are the age that you are on competition day, which I think is the more common sense way to do it anyway. Um, mm-hmm. 
So, and it, you know, being it's the same across the board, I think is, is nice because it keeps it simple. Uh -huh. Nice. So, yep. so new lifter tip. I like this one, especially for like a, a new year's resolution type of thing. Yep. If you're thinking about entering a powerlifting meet, stop thinking about it and just do it. Because the number one regret of most power lifters is not starting sooner. Yep. It's pretty true. Yep. Everybody wants to wait until they're, you know, well, when I can lift this or when I can, you know, I'm not strong enough to to right. get on the podium right now. So blah, blah, blah. It's like those are just stupid reasons to not do it. And in the moment, they're not stupid, but like the, that's the, I guess the hindsight is 2020 of having competed mm -hmm. and being around is like, I absolutely wish I would have started before I, you know, cause I, I did, I waited, well, I waited a little longer than I should have. I actually started fairly soon when I knew about it. Um, mostly cause my high school football coach signed me up without asking. Um, so that kind of forced <laughs> me in, but I, I'm so glad he did because I literally would have probably waited longer until I thought I was strong enough to compete. Right. Um, but yeah, it is. That, that's the number one thing I hear from lifters is, man, I wish I just would have started sooner instead of waiting until I thought I was strong enough to compete. Uh, uh -huh. Because the amount of knowledge you get getting into the meet, just like checking off some of those, you know, first time jitters things and checking them off with, without that much pressure is, is it's really valuable. And it just gives you a better understanding of like, you know, where you do stand, you know, and gives right. you goals. It makes it easier for goal setting, I think, because you can kind of see where okay. you, where you placed, you know, did you make all your lifts or not? Like, if not, what was the reason? Like, those are short-term goals that you can correct too, that, you know, I just right. think, yeah. Yeah. Cause we all like, I don't know when you enter our competition, it just seems like so official and like important and like, I don't know, like somehow it, it gets more serious and really like it, it's supposed to be fun in the first place. Like yeah. we do things because we enjoy them. Like should be right. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> yeah. If, if it's not, you got to kind of take a hard look at, you know, why are you even doing right. this then? Um, if there's not some, you know, and it doesn't have to always be fun, but like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a reason you're doing it, right. you know? And, and, you know, short of some of uh, the pro lifters that are making pretty good money, like 99% of the lifters are not making a living doing this. So like, it needs to be, right. it needs to be fun or yeah, something. Right. It needs to be fun or yeah. Or tied into a goal or something. So like get out there and live for the joy of it. Yeah. I mean, true. I do regret not st starting as you know, when I did, I wait, not starting when I did, I do regret not starting sooner as well. Um, but part of that was just because I, I didn't, I didn't know. Right. I just didn't know enough about powerlifting. And I had this conception that like all women who did powerlifting were like, I don't know, scary looking bodybuilders that were huge or just incredibly, I don't know, large and fluffy. Um, just that was just my mental picture of that, right? And it was completely wrong, but there you go. Yeah, again, that's you everything. don't know what you don't know. So right until you know you don't know it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think <laughs> I'm sure know. you kind of confused me on that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> you so don't maybe. know what you don't know until you know that you don't know it. Yes, I agree with that. I'm not sure that's exactly what you said just now, but maybe. I don't know either. I don't know. <laughs> don't play it back. Anyway. Anyway, cool. have an awesome Thanksgiving. I think our you listeners well. will hear this, uh, what, after Thanksgiving? No, it's going to come out today. We're, oh, there you go. Yeah, I, I got to, uh, yeah, so no, we normally record Tuesday, release it Wednesday, but we're actually re recording Wednesday, and then it's going to get released here as soon as I get it edited and published. Nice. Well, good. Well, yep. to both of our listeners, have a great Thanksgiving, too. Awesome. Later. Bye now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends.